Hey everybody, traveling again this week. We're in Birmingham for my husband to speak at a conference. Hey Danielle, very unusual time for me to be on, but you know, I just didn't want to forget about everybody. So I'm Gail Anderson and this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. So welcome, thank you those of you that have joined. Really appreciate having you jump on tonight. Um, lots of fun things happening on Mentoring, Mothers, <laughs> Mentoring Moments for Moms. We had question day last Friday. I spent about 40 minutes answering questions from people um, actually on. Thank you for those hearts. If you guys enjoy the broadcast, please tap and give me some hearts. And also, if you'd like to, swipe to the right and you can share this with somebody else. Again, I'm Gail Anderson. Oh, you love the question and answer. Thank you. Is that Amanda A. Maitley? Um, this is Mentoring Moments for Moms. And I'm so glad for those of you that are watching live because you can actually tell me some questions. Hi, Amy, great to see you. Also, if you are a replay viewer, fantastic. I'm so glad you're taking the time to catch up. And if you do miss these broadcasts, which are most weekdays at some point during the day, you can catch those again on Catch Me. Um, that link is in the profile on Periscope, so if you'll check my profile, you can get that link. Also, my husband and I are uh, bloggers. We have a ministry, and we blog at kirbyanderson.com. That link is also in the profile, so check that out. Now, after the question day, wow, that was a big one. Amy, thanks for inviting your friends, that's great. Also, I wanna let you guys know, if you have questions, if you wanna email me, You'll have to go to Twitter for that, but in the Twitter profile is my email address. So I appreciate getting comments, questions, things you'd like to hear more about. Today's topic is making your marriage stronger. And what I wanna talk about just for a few minutes here today is just about having dates with your husband. A lot of times after that whole big push with dating and being engaged and planning your wedding, you forget to continue dating after you get married. And that is extremely important. Once you are married, you have to keep up that relationship. And especially when you're a mom and you have kids around the house and they seem to have a lot of needs, you can't forget to take time for that relationship which was there before you even had kids. And that's the relationship with your husband. And my husband and I are now empty nesters and I tell you what, all that time that we spent dating each other while we were married, 10 years this year, two kids and definitely need this. Excellent, thank you for that comment. But we are enjoying a wonderful time together being empty nesters because we did not stop dating during our marriage. Because all this time that we had kids, we tried to make time however we could. So, uh, give me some ideas. What are your favorite dates with your husband? Now, Willard Harley wrote a book, His Needs, Her Needs, and he says that recreational companionship is the number two need of a husband. So that means we do need to meet that need. We need to talk about that. Date nights if you don't have to babysitters. Yep, we're gonna talk about that. I've got a few minutes tonight to bring that up. But recreational companionship, and if you're interested in this list, of ideas for recreational companionship from Willard Harley's book. I'll be happy to email that to you if you email me. The link is in my Twitter profile again. Um, there's all kinds of ideas on here. I mean, most of them I pretty much crossed out. But we did find some things that we could do together that we enjoyed. One of the things we like to do is scooter. We've had scooters for 30 some odd years and started doing it just, we just had one scooter and then we decided to do it together. That has been a lot of fun. Now we don't talk while we're scootering, but then we stop, we get coffee, we walk around a park, we do something else. So we love taking walks and hikes together and eating dinner together, fantastic. The one thing I wanna mention though is there's a lot of you that are probably on a budget and it's not gonna be easy to always have these nights where you can hire a sitter, go to a fancy dinner, or go to a movie, or do something like that. So, you real, oh, interesting, geocaching. Okay, I've never done that. But it sounds like fun. Anything that you can do to enjoy together. You know, you can have sport things you do together, pick up a hobby that you do together, all kinds of things. Many dates at home after the kids are in bed. That is one of my top things 
times at home after the kids are in bed. And, but that still requires that you make a set time to do it. You make the commitment and you stop. Okay, house gawking, trying new places for dinner, grilling out on the back patio and hiking. Fabulous, I love to hear those ideas and hearing you guys share with each other. So you've got to have some ideas of things to do, but then you've got to set the time to do it. Whether that be, it's going to be away from the house or at the house. RV camping, bike riding, even pie and coffee date. Excellent. What I was going to say about dinners is dinners are expensive. So can the dinner just go walk and talk and get coffee? Sit and have dessert and sit in the restaurant for two hours just by yourselves, enjoying each other. Thank you so much for those hearts. If you're enjoying this, please tap your screen and let me know you're enjoying it. How about walking downtown or going by a pretty park or even when you're at home just sitting and focusing on one another? Shutting off the music, shutting off the TV and just talking. But you have to make sure that you've agreed upon a time to do that. That it's not an automatic thing that, okay, every night at 9 o'clock, everything shuts down. Because us moms, we're busy and we want to keep doing things. And I know how that is because I'm a doer. So, I do want to tell you that I don't recommend movies because I really feel like as husbands and wives that have children, you do not have enough talk time together. So, you really need to cut the movies. Movies are something to experience together, but to me, there's something that you only do if you've had plenty of talk time. We need to have lots of talk time on a regular basis to stay connected. That is to stay connected personally, emotionally, as well as just on all the family matters. I mean, if all we're spending in the time with our husband is discussing things about the house, problems with the car, um, our social schedule, and who's doing what when, or problems with the kids, that's not really enriching our relationship. So there have to be times that you get away. And it's great to be able to talk about some of those things. That's us most of the time. Hey, I remember I had five in under seven years. It was busy. And I remember after the twins were born, oh, I think they were probably about six weeks old, and my husband said, I'd like to go out on a date. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. Five kids, baby twins. How can I do that, you know? And I just bit my lip and I went out on the date with him and we hired two adult sitters just to get out for that night. But it is important and we need to prioritize that. I talked about this earlier, just making your husband number one over the kids. But dating is extremely important. Now some of the fun things um, are having dinner together after the kids go to bed. Yep, you feed them dinner, you get them in bed and listen to my scopes if you need some help in getting your kids to stay in bed and not keep getting up. But then there's a time where you can have a nice dinner in the dining room with your husband and just have time together. I used to love telling my husband, I think we did it on Thursdays for a while, he would come home for lunch at 1 o'clock rather than the normal 12 o'clock and I would have the kids down for a nap already. So we had time together then. Just an hour for lunch to just sit and talk without distraction is amazing, absolutely amazing. So you might want to limit some of the family issues that you talk about. Try for your time not to be negative. There's plenty of times that you can discuss all those laundry lists of things that need to be talked about, but make your time with him special. And really find out what's going on with him and how things are at work and how he feels about what he's doing and, and his profession and where you guys are going in life and how you can make your marriage better. These times are worth so much. A second email address to sign up for coupons and discount places pays off. Oh, excellent. You got $5 off payway. We have several places we do that with, several places. And it's awesome to be able to have those treats to go out to dinner for five to seven dollars. It's amazing. So, let me say just a word about sitters since we were talking about that. Uh, don't expect your husband to set it up. That is the dream. Everyone wonders, oh, will my husband do that? Set up these wonderful dates, plan them, get the sitter, pick up the sitter, take care of everything. But you know what? You can't expect that. And as I've said before, you cannot hold a debt over your husband's head that he does not have the resources to pay. You can't expect something out of him that is not really, really natural. <laughs> yep, I wish I would have thought of that more when I was in the busy, busy family years.
So, there are some other options. You know, one, you plan it. You say, hey, honey, could we go out Friday night? He may have an idea, you may not. It doesn't matter. Um, have another family member babysit. Um, a couple of different places I lived, I actually started a babysitting co-op so that we would swap out babysitting. Now that was, you know, it paid its toll on me because then I had to sit for other kids because every time I went out, it cost me a lot more tokens for those five children than it did to watch someone else's two. But actually, when you have kids over, if you get a system going, it makes things go smoother. It's good playtime. So, um, it is important though to think about these things ahead of time. My husband works a lot. I struggle with our time and family time. I know, but you know what, ladies? If you start this now, if you make a commitment, if you can't do it every week, okay, make it every two weeks or even once a month. Find another family that you can swap with. Okay, you go out on the second Friday night and then I'll go out on the third Friday night. I have friends that swap out. That's fantastic. Hey, grateful lady, haven't seen you for a while. Nice to have you jump on today. So it's really something that you got to think about, you got to plan for, and it's so easy to push off when you're busy mom. So I just want to encourage you to do that. Again, for the activities, look at things that you, you have common interest in that you can do. There's lots of things. And like I said, email me and I'll uh, send you this list from Willard Harley of recreational activities for couples. A lot of it is uh, sports type things, but you might find something on there that you have not seen before and discover, hey, we love camping together. We're gonna do this. So anyway, spend some time with your husband. Make sure you have regular dates. And each of these things add up over time. If you continue to do them week after week, month after month, year after year, you will be amazed at the results in your relationship, in your family. It's wonderful. So thanks all of you for being here. How often do I think couples should go out on dates? Okay, I think once a week is great, but we didn't do that, okay? Once a month is a wonderful way to start. If you're the one who's you know, initiating this, talk to your husband, get agreement, and maybe even plan the same Friday night or Saturday night or Thursday night or whatever each month. But definitely start out with at least once a month and you can always get more than that. We have to budget and plan ahead. And you know what? I'm gonna be talking about budgeting one of these days too because that definitely comes under household management. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here we are, I'm Gail Anderson. This is Mentoring Moments for Moms. We talk a lot and uh, get together on things like parenting, marriage, household management, health, and living simply. So tonight, I'm just gonna give you those thoughts to think about. If you watch this replay, tell your friends about it. Really appreciate you guys being on. Thank you so much, Grateful Lady. It's just great to see all of you, to hear from you. Have a wonderful evening, and even though I am in the big Birmingham, Alabama, I will be checking in with you this week. You are very welcome. Have a great night.